Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. Today we have again awesome news for Ukrainian army because we started the second stage of the counter-attack which could be as massive as it was in Kharkiv region. I think that we're gonna get to the same scenario in Lugansk Oblast. So here Liman is the city that is still occupied by the Russian forces and they were able to build huge defense lines and our forces just cannot go from the Radia Gorodok across this Syrsky Donetsk River. That is why we are pushing towards Ritkadup village to Nevsky bypassing the Russian build defense lines and also ukrainian forces were able to cross the river near to yampel so we are moving from this direction we are pushing them hard from the south and we have a great success in ritka dup direction moving from the north direction i think partially we're gonna go here and we're gonna cut russians behind these lakes or water storages. This counter-offensive operation from Ukrainian side is very effective and there is the scenario of the Russian forces to be encircled in Liman. My friends, and now make sure that you are watching me from my original channel, which is Denis Davidev. And now let's go to the timeline. I just want to show you the progress of the nearby days. So it was before like two days ago, and day by day we are taking some of the ground in Ritkadup here in that area. We took many kilometers of our land back. However, it is still, as you can see, in a gray area. It means that there still could be Russians fighting in this territory, some of their small groups. However, today I saw the photo of our forces actually in Rytka Dup. It means that we took this part under Ukrainian control. And now let's check out the possible way out for Russia here. So they concentrated mostly in Liman. There are around 3,000 troops near to the city and in the city itself. The fighting, as you can see, is ongoing in the city, suburbs, and also they have the single road, which is leaning from Liman towards Zorichne, Toske, all across to Kremina, and from Kremina uh, to this main supply uh, hub, Svatove. And that is the only supply link that they have towards Liman city. And obviously that road is very close to the front lines, which makes it a not reliable supply line for Russians. It means that they are struggling. They have the way out to stay in the city and fight and being encircled by Ukrainian forces. The other way out is to use the same road to evacuate their troops. Basically retreating from this territory and giving Ukrainian army the way to Lysychansk, Severodonetsk and Rubizhne. That is the next step for Ukrainian army because if we take all of those cities there is no any uh, obstacle for us to go to Sterbilsk. We also push quite a bit near to Kupensk if we say about this massive front line in the Kharkiv region and I just want to uh, show you the timeline. So it was yesterday and today it's been confirmed that we took the Kupensk Wuzlavy. We already saw some of the pictures as I told you yesterday yeah and we push towards this road towards Svatova so our main goal for now is to take Troitske and Svatova which are the main supply crossroads for the Russian army but obviously Starobilsk is more important compared to those cities if we take this one we're gonna take all of the north part of Lugansk self-proclaimed republic which is actually Lugansk region of Ukraine. I also monitor Russian publics and their journalists which are on the front lines sometimes and they say that the Ukrainian army crossed the river here near to Yampel and they are already close to Kremina. Kremina is on the road which is leading to uh, Zarichne and if we cut this supply line for Russians there will be no any supplies for the group which stays in Liman. And I guess Russians would still withdraw their army, they will not stay there because Putin is afraid of those footages of the massive Russian prisoners, war prisoners of those columns, as it was filmed during the Second World War, then Germans captured lots of Soviets and 
there were numerous of soldiers going to the prison. I honestly think that he afraid of that because it was the Putin's main command to withdraw forces from Kharkiv region and Izum. Still, we were able to capture lots of the forces, but they were running so fast that they left all of their tanks, armored vehicles, under equipment here. And here, my friends, we'll have one more scenario which could be the same as in Kharkiv region before so Russians may run away from Liman and we're gonna take all of this part down to Svatove and maybe going further to Starobilsk however Russians still perform their attacks on Bakhmut city I don't know why it's kind of stupid idea then you have the gap in your defense throwing forces on attack to other directions just wasting them because uh, we were able to build a huge defense lines and they are running running like in lord of rings movie running and we are shooting back killing them all and they have severe losses near to donetsk we were building those defense lines for eight years so here we face the same scenario for the ukrainian army yes we're gonna go to liman again so we push we try to push to liman but russians were able to build huge defense line here that is why we are not wasting our soldiers for those attacks we are bypassing the liman city because we take care about our soldiers my friends our people is the most precious resource of ukrainian army and for russia well they just waste them for nothing because they have political goal occupying donetsk oblast over here donetsk region but how can they occupy slovansk kramatorsk uh, it's just impossible with the resources they have again my friends i don't want to speculate about the possible russian encirclement in this region i just see the picture as i see it probably we got some of the misinformation from other resources but i trust the deep state map live because uh, they analyze the footages from the front lines they also speak with locals uh, who live near to the front lines so i would say their information is kind of precise so i do expect that russian army here will be troubled and what's the outcome for it I would like to go to Svatova, I would like to cut Troitske, but uh, we don't know what may happen because it's the war, my friends. So I'm encouraging you to support Ukraine. Obviously, I'm supporting my country also, but everything may change very fast. Now let's go to the south, my friends. Here, no changes. The fighting is continuous. And we have Odessa city, which is under attack by the Russian uh, drones, or it's better to say Iranian drones, which are used by Russians. They are launching those drones from this territory uh, near to Odessa, so this part, and we already attacked their hub that they use as a control center for those drones, and uh, every evening Odessa got hurt. And today we got the latest news that there were four major strikes on Kharkiv city and Russia fired their rockets from the Belgorod or the air base near to Belgorod so they fired S-300 rockets which were redesigned to be ground-to-ground -ground missiles originally those are anti-aircraft rockets and there is the huge fire today in Kharkiv region and also some problems with electricity and yes Russia still wants to annex those regions four regions of Ukraine Kherson area Zaporizhia region Donetsk and Lugansk so it was some kind of uh, fake referendum there and today they put the result more than 97 percent uh, they say that people voted for joining Russia so it's crazy because they want to join Zaporizhia region but mostly people live here in the city which is under Ukrainian control uh, the main city in this region and around 1,500,000 people live there and totally here we have a little bit less than 2 million people who live on uh, Russian controlled territory and Ukrainian controlled territory so how can they go to some sort of referendums without taking all of the control under this region i don't know but they may announce if ukraine takes this under their control it means that they are attacking russia so it's crazy and the world should react 
on that. And now let's go to some of the news and events. Today the gas pipeline in Baltic Sea was damaged. Probably someone smoked at the wrong place. And Sweden, a scientist, or it's better to say seismologist, tell that there were some of the blasts. And I believe that it was the Russian sabotage. They used submarines or scuba divers to target that pipeline. Russians just want to blackmail the European Union countries saying that they will not supply the gas to those countries before they say many times that they gonna block the supplies but they have the contract for supplies and that is the way out for them not to supply their gas to those countries. Obviously that would rise the gas price on the European markets and the only way how they can supply their gas to European countries is through Ukraine. And that is why I believe those seismologists saying that there were explosions. But again, my friends, I'm unaware of who was planting that bomb on a pipeline or who was firing the torpedo or maybe it was some sort of blast from inside. It could be everything but my thoughts that it's just Russia. United States Secretary Antony Blinken said that Ukraine may use Western-made weapons to target unrecognized Russian annexed uh, territories that they tried to put to Russia after those referendums. I think no country in the world would recognize those fake referendums. This is the picture of Kupensk Vuzlavy, uh, this is the railway station and we got that city under Ukrainian control and we put Ukrainian flag there. Here we have the military map of international resources of war which is in the United States and they also analyzed the voltages from the front line saying that we are in Rytka Dup and however here we don't have the break from Ukrainian forces uh, to Crimea. Russian soldiers put the washing machines inside those ammunition box just to deliver them back to Russia. They don't have morale, they don't have motivation, they don't have discipline unlike in Ukrainian army where we have all of those components that is why we're gonna win this war but obviously Russia may use nukes in Ukraine they threat our people here with nukes and I think that's uh, the other scenario of this war no one knows what may happen in case they would use uh, nuclear weapons I just hope that Putin and his circle are not that mad to use uh, nuclear weapons in Ukraine or any kind of other country because it's the unprecedented action if we let part of Ukraine or Ukraine into Putin's hands and that will create the threat for the world because now he say like Zaporizhia, Kherson, whatever is Russia so if you fight there we're gonna use nukes but tomorrow he may say that Kiev is Russia day after tomorrow Warsaw, Poland, Estonia, Latvia Alaska. My friends, it is so dramatic right now. I think that even Caribbean crisis was softer compared to what we see in the face of Putin's threat to the world. Those old Soviet-made lorries were spotted in one of the railway stations in Russia and Russia probably delivered them to the front lines. Here we have already the Z marks and those lorries are Cross 257 which were designed in 1965 and were in production for just a few years and after were put for the long storage. You can see from the paint job, part of the corrosion, what we see, some of the amber here. Yeah, Russia is in luck of the resources for sure. This is the Russian soldier, tankists, who served in the army a long time ago, but he got this profession. And he said that there will not be any kind of training in tactics on those tanks. They will be just thrown to the front lines to fight. He isn't desperate. He is almost crying. He knows that he will lose his life 100%. During the Ukrainian counterattack in Kharkiv region, Russia lost the first tank army that used to be the best one they had. Uh, that army went to parades many times and they got the best equipment 
and the best training. So those mobilized soldiers obviously are doomed there. And those are Russians who are trying to leave Russia because they do afraid of the massive mobilization that they have. And I want to warn you that they are not against the Putin's regime. They still have that imperialistic mindset. They just afraid of being killed on the front lines. That is why I think it's a great threat for the neighboring countries of Russia like Georgia and others. And what Russian army did, they put their military to the border with Georgia and they start to give the army notices to the men who trying to leave Russia. Some of my viewers ask me why don't we see lots of the footage from the Russian side. Well, basically because they are not allowed to have smartphones. They only can have those kind of with buttons. Russian army afraid of any kind of the leaks of what is really happening on the front lines. That is why they are taking everything that has the camera, even smartphones. As for our soldiers, they film everything, but they publish only after a few days, then, for example, they took some kind of the village or the city. The British intelligence says that President Putin is scheduled to address both houses of the Russian parliament on Friday 30, so very, very soon, in three days. Obviously, he would announce that the Russia became bigger and he would start to blackmail Ukraine for us to withdraw our forces from Russian territory. But no, my friends, we're gonna keep counteroffensive operation which is ongoing very successfully as for me all across the front lines and the main trick here whether putin would announce the war against ukraine protecting russian territory and threatening ukraine and the world with nukes or he would continue to perform his limited special operation and continue to use his mobilized forces as a main force to force Ukraine uh, to sign the peace agreement. About nukes, uh, he might be bluffing, he might be not bluffing, but if he would start this massive war against Ukraine, probably I would send my family out from this country, unfortunately. Because no one knows what is inside the head of that crazy psycho. But as I say to you, United States officially say that there are no any clues that Russia is getting ready to use nuclear weapons in Ukraine or any kind of other country and I would trust uh, the intelligence services of United States of America. At the same time, Secretary of State Blinken said that in case Russia would use nukes in Ukraine, the response would be catastrophic for Russia. Yet we don't know the nature of that response and I hope that we'll never know. How Russia takes care about their own mobilized soldiers, they don't have the place for them in the military camps, that is why they just sleep in, on the open air <laughs> under the portrait of their leader and inside the building there are no any kind of beds, nothing. Yeah, there are some, but mostly old mattresses and nothing more. Lack of those simple resources is showing that Russia wasn't prepared for this scenario. So they were not planning for the long-term war. They were planning to take Kiev in three days. That's it. And now they are struggling even giving a uniform to their own soldiers. The uniform that we see is old-fashioned that were put also for the long-term storage in 1995 or something. Also news from United States of America, they will give 16 of those NASAMS systems. Before they wanted to give two, now 16. I'm happy, but at the same time, I'm very concerned the possibly United States uh, intelligence, they know something and maybe we should have those systems to protect Kyiv city against the nuclear rockets. It's just one of the possible scenarios. Um, NASAMS is very effective against the rockets. It was made together with uh, Norway. And as I said to you, those systems are used to protect Washington. Poland said to its citizens to leave Russia as soon as possible using all kind of transports. And today we have the same notice from Bulgaria to their citizens to leave Russia immediately. 
I don't know why they say like that, but also quite concerned. President of Ukraine Vladimir Zelensky in his address to United Nations said that if Russia would annex Ukrainian territory recognizing those fake referendums, he has nothing to talk about with Putin. It means, my friends, that we'll have only military solution for that case. And it also means that we need to have more help from our Western allies providing more weapons to Ukrainian army. My friends, I'm going to keep you updated on the situation here in Ukraine. Now, what can you do to support this channel is just to press the like to this video. It helps me a lot. And if you want to support this channel financially, there are always the links in the video description below. You may support me on PayPal, Patreon or Donatella, whichever you like. I wish you a peaceful sky wherever you are. Have a great time.